the field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! Improbable scenes! It's where the dream begins to achieve the ultimate victory. The underdogs have prevailed once again! One cup open to all. There is a celebration in Orlando. Now, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. The field doesn't care if you're a pro or trying to be one. It only asks, how bad do you want it? It's unbelievable! The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. And we are live here at Ohlone Soccer Stadium in Fremont, California. Former Manchester United goalkeeper Gary Bailey and myself, David Gascon. Thanks for joining us today on Bleacher Report. Gary, it's a rather comfortable day, but uh, with the temperatures at 59 degrees, there are thoughts of rain, but we'll see if Mother Nature has any kind of impact on this one. International San Francisco moving from left, excuse me, from right to left on your screen. El Farolito will be moving from left to right. Yeah, exciting. It's the Open Cup. It's uh, the chance of glory. There's uh, the fans are getting into it as well. You know, you live for the dream. And, and last season, we saw Sac Republic from the USL get to the final against Orlando. We saw a number of teams from lower divisions beat some of the big boys. So that's what every player in this pitch will be dreaming of. And they certainly will be. And that is the case as we look through the debris here. A little bit of smoke. Something I know you're well accustomed to, especially internationally as this corner kick will be headed away at the last second. We'll go through the starting lineups as this match goes along the first couple of minutes of play, though. Glad you can be here with us on a very comfortable Wednesday afternoon. First touch at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. It's a different format, too, Gary, for us with the U.S. Open Cup. Different format because it's not like you could play a couple games and get your feet wet. It's knockout action immediately. Yeah, it is, and an early goal helps, and, you know, it depends on the crowd getting behind you. It depends on the pitch, the conditions. It can all play a part, and that's the excitement of the cup. But generally speaking, you want to take the first chance that comes along, settle yourself down, because even the better sides, once you get 1-0 down in a cup match, it becomes a real battle. And it is a unique experience just because of the simple fact that we have amateurs and pros. And this is throughout the course of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. This is first round action today. They have 14 matchups in the first round, and then you bleed things over into next week, and things will get rather interesting because you have MLS clubs, you have USL championship teams that get involved, so it's anybody and everybody, it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. College players not allowed to play in the tournament at this stage, so, you know, you, as you're right, it's players who have been there and done that at some level. It might not be the highest level, but it's a lot of ex-pros, a lot of players who've, who've played around the fringes of professional football. So I think we're guaranteed a, a nice standard of, of, of football here today. It should be a really exciting cup match. Hard to believe, though, because we haven't been around since the inception, but 108th edition, the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. And so you have teams from coast to coast getting things underway here. It actually started yesterday, and now it bleeds into today. El Parolito in the gold and blue going from left to right on your screen. International San Francisco from right to left in those white and dark uniforms. That combination today going from right to left. Some good early play involving the captain, Herbert Soto. There you can see his armband, the number seven. Just on the ball, he's got that red armband on his right arm. Crucial player for the home side and for coach Santiago Lopez. We'll look at the keepers here in just a moment. Mason Kelly is in net today for International San Francisco. Johan Lisa in net for El Parolito. So as you mentioned, the critical point is whenever a marker is scored. This one bending in over the net, though, and Keeley make sure he didn't get a hand on it. That was the defender's head, and uh, sometimes those can fly in the back of your net, so no doubt the defenders will be relieved that uh, it didn't cause their goalkeeper, Mason Keeley, any problems. Look here, you'll see the white shirt get up just there. The goalkeeper making 100% sure it goes over. 
different sequence too because even though we will play a full 90 minutes we do have the luxury of extra time and something we had talked about gary off there because usl championship and some of the other respective leagues don't have that bonus soccer if you will so you get those late game magical goals that happen in extra time that could be the difference maker or of course we got pks yeah could go to penalties so it happens on this cross and that corner kick awfully dangerous keely was on his goal line but it goes just wide of the net so a couple early chances right now for el Farolito. comes very close to goalkeeper mason keely i'm looking at him thinking this is really his ball four yards out and in the end I think it's some good defending from Nikolai Littleton, the number seven. Yeah, Littleton spoiled it there. Uric on the attempt on that corner. I'll see if they work short here, though, to Delgado. He's lined up close. This one bending in as well with the left foot headed away at the last second. International San Francisco at least doing a decent job defensively to get it out of harm's way. The center will play this back to Lisa. But first touch, it wasn't raining, but now Mother Nature has crept in and going to make an impact. In matches like this, as you see the turf conditions today, Gary, how does the track run with rain? It gets very tricky on turf because it's that sort of mixture of, of, of um, synthetic materials. It's, it's different to when you play on grass. The, the match originally was scheduled to be played at Boxer Stadium. But the rules in the San Fran area, as, as the basics are understand it, is if it does rain heavily, yes. it must move. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And uh, oddly enough, at this time of the year in California, northern and southern California, they have been hammered by rain and snow and flooding along the way. I used to let this thing go by. It'll be a goal kick. Yeah, hard to believe, but uh, I remember back two, three weeks ago that the city of Pasadena in southern California San Gabriel Mountains were covered in snow. If you go up the grapevine from Los Angeles up to Central California, those freeways are actually closed off. So the weather kind of peculiar for the West Coast. More particular for the Southern California market, you don't get that. But Northern California gets its shades of, of rain, especially San Francisco. We talk about rain, fog, the wind, the whole nine yards. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, for these players, they don't care what the conditions are. This is their big moment. They've been looking forward to this. And, uh, you know, the glory awaits the winner in the second round. I believe it's Oakland Roots. That's correct. And there's a number of players on international San Francisco's team that actually have played for Oakland Roots. So for them, and you know, those players in particular will be super excited if they get to meet up with their old side. Keely, what this thing go by. Yeah, we were speaking a few minutes before going on air. Matt Fondi, who we imagine will have some mm. kind of impact in today's match, has a great deal of experience in the professional ranks. Yeah, he's been with Chicago Fire. Played in an Open Cup semi-final, so he's been almost right to the, the big match itself. This one played in a line drive. National San Francisco trying to move on the counter. Fani did get taken out there. Speaking of all that kind of an impact, I beg your pardon, it was Lazaro who was spilled. Leo Lazaro getting onto a nice counter-attack possibility. Stretches it, gets to the ball first. And he's a man who's uh, an ex Farolito player. One of two. So a, besides the fact there's a couple of players on the uh, international SF side who meet up with their old team, Oakland Roots, should they win. There's also two international SF players, ex uh, El Farolito, Leo Lazaro, who you saw board down there, and Quintero is the other one. He's on the bench. Argast out wide. Luca. Good job of maintaining his footing for a brief moment. That one's going to be forced out. Officials did indicate a corner. No, not yet. Rivera. Result in a throw in. Santiago Lopez, the leader of the technical staff for El Farolito. Amir Darabi, the head coach for International San Francisco. And to be correct, Dr. Darabi. Mm. Who actually took himself off the roster. He's been playing, <laughs> yeah. even though he's getting on now. He said, it's, I think he's 33 or 32, perhaps. And he said uh, he had a big decision to take himself off the roster. He says, because when he plays, he just can't concentrate on the tactical stuff. So, right. a bit of agony and all of that. Oh. 
Great strike from just outside. That attempt by Lazar was blocked on the way through. El Parolito trying to counter, but a whistle on the play as we go back as Arias was taken out. And Jamie down on the deck. And yeah, go back to Amir Darabi, the head coach. He said it was agony taking himself off the roster. <laughs> I bet he would love to be involved in this glory as we see a bit of a battle on the edge of the box there. Players all going for it. And a little bit of a, a foot up there, perhaps, from Dylan Outram, was it? Or Matt Fondi up front, one of the attackers. Fascinating to see how these lineups will work because when we spoke with both head coaches just yesterday, they talked about deploying in one specific way, but players coming in, players coming out. They want to make sure they have the right combination. Fondi goes down. His chip into the box. Looking on the left-hand side for Argast. Volleyed around. Fondi with the strike. He just misses wide. Lisa stretching out. A good bit there, though, from Fondi. Well, he said he had played for Chicago Fire and Oakland Roots, and he's got some real ability, Matt Fondi. Just lined it up there. Had time. Didn't have a lot of pressure on him, but only inches wide there of Lisa's goal. Fascinating to see the makeup and, and mix of teams, depending on where you're at across the country. El Perolito has a healthy mix of players from Mexico, Honduras, Colombia, the United States, of course, Paraguay. And then international San Francisco. A couple of players that are Brazilian. A couple of players that are German and mostly US. But a lot of these players have either had the experience at one level or another, whether it's MLS, USL Championship, League One, and of course the amateur ranks. And frankly, you got to give a ton of credit to the head coaches because this is not something that they're getting a great deal of financial support from. They have to do all of this from grassroots perspective. I think in the case of international San Francisco, it's Amir Darabi, the coach himself, who's put his money behind yep. it. He's made it happen. He put this, this team together. And I think you have to give them, these coaches, so much credit for the, the hours and the, and the commitment to the cause. Ulrich with a fine intercept there of Littleton. Back he comes, the Brazilian. It's a great heads-up play, though, against Littleton, was trying to sneak that pass past him on the right-hand side. Into the 13th minute here from Fremont, California. Yeah, 108th edition in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. As Gary had mentioned at the top of the show, Orlando taking care of Sacramento last year in the finals one to nothing late in that match and then orlando opened up to a three nothing difference and we'll talk about that as this day goes along in fact we'll elaborate more once we get to halftime but first we got plenty of action here yeah and there was a couple of surprises involving sac republic last year they knocked out mls side san jose earthquakes la galaxy and sporting kansas city you can even go down to the, the, the USL1, a Northern Colorado hailstorm. I did that match when they beat Real Salt Lake away. So, you know, shocks. And that's why both these sides are looking at the next round going, Oakland Roots, come on. We want to take on a USL opposition. This is, this is what we're dreaming of. Contact here. Fails a play on. Hurik. Fine move trying to get around Argast. Delgado, and he peels this one back. But it's always the dangerous predicament that you're in if you are an MLS or a USL championship team looking at the lower tiered. You don't want to take them for granted, but nevertheless, they will come and bite you any given day. Yeah, this is, this is shocks every year because mostly the top teams will put up often a second string team, mm. give the reserves a run up. But, you know, that's even with your top side, it can be a battle in the cup because you know, you go 1-0 down, and then especially if you're away from home, even against low opposition sides, it can be an incredible battle. Elements are against you, and the, the pitch, and the crowd. Woodick on the right-hand side has some space. He can't get the shot off. Good transition defense there from International San Francisco. That was the captain there, Jack Callan, coming in just in the nick of time to get that ball away. 
Good thing for the international SF side is there are a lot of tall players. There's about five or six of them who are well clear of six foot. Working short here. That one also escaped in the box. Becerra with the header, ain't turned that one over. The reason I mention that is it's set pieces. They shouldn't really get beaten, International San Francisco, with all the big guys. And conversely, when they get free kicks, they could be a massive threat to Farolito. Yeah, case in point, you, you mentioned the height. I mean, Mason Keeley in net today for International San Francisco. He played his ball at San Francisco State, but he's six foot five. Wow. I mean, you can't coach that, but it gives you a great deal of range once you're in net for your respective club. Littleton. Fondi moving around. El Parolito's got two, three players that converge on him. It's a bad turn over there. Delgado forced it. No numbers, but here on the right-hand side, Benitez was open, had his arm up. Paul almost got to him. Would it tease one up with the left foot, but that one was air mailed. Uh, it's, it's worth the dip. You never know. Obviously, at this level, it's more difficult to get things on target. They haven't got the hours of practice that the professionals have and the skill level. But you never know if that's your day to stick one in the top corner. No doubt about it. We are not playing with your emotions if you look at both clocks, the one on the pitch and then the one on the graphic on the left-hand side. College ranks, they do have the clock winding down as opposed to the U.S. Open Cup moving up on the dial. But we can assure you we're in the 17th minute. A little bit of contact there from Benitez. But all in all, good spirit so far. Yeah, very good spirits and uh, talking of good spirits, International SF are known as the good boys of soccer. <laughs> yeah. There's, there was an article in the papers and uh, the coach, uh, Amir Darabi, saying to us that he actually got rid of a couple of people who didn't fit in, who, who weren't part of the family. And he said he, he, as well as being able to play soccer, the guys have to be good people. And, and, that's, and that's what the players enjoy, that whenever they get together, they're, they're a team, they're, there's no nastiness, there's no backbiting. And that's why they're known as the good boys. A we'll take out there as Argas went down in a heap. The referee might be having a little word now because, yes, it is slippery conditions, but um, actually, I didn't see much contact now that you mentioned it. I was about to say, <laughs> got to be careful, but there was minimal contact. Nonetheless, the visitors have got the free kick. You mentioned the character of International San Francisco. El Parolito's got some character and also a little bit of history. They've, they've competed in this for quite a while. They were eliminated by Fresno back in 2018 in the second round. You know, but they've got here by beating up rivals in the local area. And uh, it's one of those things that Santiago Lopez discussed with us yesterday. He feels like these guys are going to be good to compete for a full 90 and then some if need be. Yeah, we often forget that, but there's three or four games already taking place just to get to this level. Yep. There's a clash of heads, and it looks like Matt fondy has gone down. He's holding his head. Referee's having a word, and I wonder if there's going to be a card coming out. You know, fondy has been on the deck for as much as we've seen anybody so far through the first 18-plus minutes. Fondi just indicating there was an elbow. Referee pointing at the number two, which is Jonathan Mosquera, the 35-year-old Colombian. And the yellow card, it looks like. That's exactly the case. It's her first one of the match. So a yellow here in the 19th minute. I'll tell you what, Gary, that's about as polite and about as deliberate as an official will provide on a yellow card. But I got to imagine in a setting like this with first round action, he wants to make sure that he sets the tone for these players. Like, don't forget, you want to be here for the long haul if need be. And a yellow card is one thing, but two, it gives you the gate. He's now getting a bit annoyed with the uh, the El Farolito players not listening to him. He's telling them to move back from the ball. The 10 yards, the required 10 yards. He's done this a few times now, so wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of the referee. Leo Lazaro will take this free kick. Farolito man. Yeah. 
So Mosquera, number two, the one with the yellow card here in the 19th minute. First one of the match for either side. It's been physical, yes, but not really harmful until finding had a collision of the heads, if, if you will. A binding of the minds. But here's Lazaro. First major threat for international San Francisco right now. Lazaro pulls the trigger, hits the wall. But he was going for the shot, it seemed, and I just wonder why when you've got that many big players in the box, their strength is getting all their six foot four and five players into dangerous areas. Nonetheless, Leo Lazaro decides he's going to try and have a crack and comes off the head of the defenders. Good defending by the home side to block that. Long throw in here. We're looking for Fondi. Urik able to escape. Pushes this one up to Benitez. And Farolito's looking for some contact here and a possible call. Tell you what, at least early on, Gary, the couple of players that have been on the ball a lot, Hurik on one side for El Farrito, and then Fondi and Lazaro have had a great deal of touching early on for international San Francisco. Yeah, there's two slightly different styles with the, the smaller players of El Farrito, but maybe technically better versus the big, tall players of international San Fran who prefer the slightly more physical game, but can play as well. And... Uh, and Two different systems as well. 3-5-2 for the home side and more of a 3-4-3 for international SF. Yeah, Davey. Antrim was looking for it. As you can see, though, scattered clouds and the rain has subsided a little bit. The wind is still here. That'll come and go throughout this entire match, just the nature of the area. And the conditions here today. Another hard challenge and going down was Nikolai Littleton. Yeah, and Soto asking the question, well, if the player goes down to the ball, why am I blown up? And that's a fair question. If you have a look at the number seven in the white shirt, he ducks his head down towards the ground. So, you know, it's a, you put your head in a dangerous situ a situation. Nonetheless, now this time it's a free kick. Now, will Leo Lazaro try and put this in with the big boys? Littleton is outside the box. Lazaro working really out wide, too, as a nice attempt for Rivera to climb the ladder, but too much contact there inside the 18. It's difficult there when you're nearly a foot bigger than the man marking you. Is it really a foul if you're leaning over him because you've got that extra height? And the referee's view it was, and that's the only view that counts. Shots right now are even at three apiece. <laughs> Nothing on target just yet for either keeper to look at. Kinney escapes. Logan Kinney for International San Francisco. We got more contact here. And that should be a blatant foul against Lazaro, and it is. Referee having a word. Maybe giving a last warning. And you do sense that El Farolito will, will try and get the bigger players of international SF to, to make fouls, to lunge in. The discussion between the coaching staff, no doubt putting a little bit of pressure on the officials, saying, hey, you can't keep fouling. At some point, the card has to come out. This one awfully dangerous. Callan playing it the other way, though. El Farolito with some numbers here. Higuera put this one into the box. You see Keeley skying up for it, lets that thing come into the breadbasket before Benitez was there to mix things up. Goalkeeper Mason Keeley, a little bit lucky there initially when that high ball came through and Jack Callan headed it on. The goalkeeper had come to catch it. If Jack Callan's header doesn't miss the goal, it goes into an empty net. So. A bit of miscommunication between goalkeeper and center back. Speaking of that there, he get a try to love that tap that thing over Keeley. Would not have counted here in the 25th minute. 
you're going to chip that goalkeeper, it's going to have to be a good <laughs> chip at six foot four or thereabouts. Uh, it's always nice to see a ball go into the net. Gets the confidence, Bruin, even if it won't count. But it couldn't get to it. And Palito, though, will maintain possession here. Springing loose and free for a moment, Arias. A slide tackle, though, in the middle of the pitch by Littleton. Good wipeout play there. Montring couldn't make good with possession for a moment. 26th minute. Yeah, that tackle from Littleton, another example of how slightly more physical international SFR. Then flying in tackle, which if you don't get it right, it's an almost guaranteed yellow card. So a risky tackle from Little Tim, but he got it spot on. <laughs> well, Ocean City defeated Westchester yesterday. 3-1 was the final score. That opened up the parade here, the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. 14 first round matchups. Glad he can hang out with us here today on Bleach Report. Also on YouTube, Keeley comes out with an open net. The last second, Lazaro helping his running mate out. Looking at the goalkeeper, he's got a lot of bodies in front of him. He's got to get them out the way or get around them or call early. Watch the ball comes in and then, then he starts to come almost late. And look at that. Wow, he goes right over the top. That was a dangerous moment for the big keeper. Head over heels, not the best way to do that. <laughs> Woodick trying to get some speed around the corner of Argas. Those players collide there in the corner. Referee once again sprints to the spot, make sure nothing gets out of hand. That's really good refereeing. Keeley who's been rather active. Fondy mixing things up. He goes down by Soto. A couple players that we had circled prior to first touch today. Parolito trying to use the speed to get around the bigs of International San Francisco, but International San Francisco able to use their size fully to their advantage. Fondi can't get to that. Lisa comes out. And now it continues to sprinkle a bit on the pitch. So it rained to open things up. A brief pause, and now it has returned. Just looking at the name El Farolito, when we asked about it, it means little lighthouse. So maybe not suggesting they're not the tallest of players, it's a little lighthouse. <laughs> but shining so bright. Yeah, absolutely, with their skills, why not? Makes perfect sense in the Bay Area. They actually won the cup back in 1993 under a different name. I think they beat Indianapolis that year. But it wasn't under the name El Farolito. I think in comparison, International San Fran only founded in May 2021, so they're only a couple of years old. And they play in the SF, SFL League in San Francisco, a league that's 120 years old, so some history going back in that league. Bodies colliding here, and they'll continue to play on that chip from Arias. Play it away, though. And now here's Antrin, pushes this one up to Fondi. Fondi's got no numbers. We'll see if he can get around Mosqueda. Mosquera's going to have to be careful, too. He picked up a yellow card earlier in this match in the 19th minute. The referee deemed that to be a fair shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder collision between two big men, and they both get up and get on with it. It's always good to see. Plenty of matches throughout today. Appalachian FC, Fusion U23 will also get underway at 7 o'clock Eastern. 4 p.m. Pacific. Motown, Manhattan SC also at that time. We'll have a variety of options to choose from. 
with certain matches. All in all, YouTube will cater to the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. And also Bleacher Report making way for us today. So we certainly appreciate the opportunity to showcase the town out here. Well, it's an even cup match so far, isn't it? And therein lies the danger. One goal could decide it. Long way to go yet, of course, only a third of the way through. But you do get the sense when, when games are this tight that it could just be one little moment of magic, one error perhaps, that separates two very evenly matched teams. I do feel at least in these environments, which are great because the knockout situation is that more often than not, you'll get players and teams that really go for it as opposed to maybe the course of a regular season with the respective leagues trying some things out, maybe a little passive, more tactics involved and experimentation here. You got one shot. That's the way to do it. Perhaps just get it over the top and see what happens. <laughs> Zaro, Argost, and here's Fondi. Broken up, found his leg though. This is a delicate tackle. See if this results in a yellow card as Lazaro goes down. That's one of his former teammates has given him a kick by the looks of it. But that, this all came from a big ball up front and sometimes in cup football is more of a bumping of hips to be honest. But sometimes in cup football it doesn't have to be pretty. Right. Just get it in there, see what happens, put the other defense under pressure. Get a free kick on the edge of the box, which is what they've got. You get all your big six foot four players in, and hey, just put the ball up there with some air in it and see what happens. With a Sagetta with the contact. Just a common foul. Lead official Pedro Vasquez up and down the pitch today for us. He's been fairly fair. Mm, been very good so far. Pedro Vasquez Luna having a little word with some of the defenders and attackers holding on to each other. Lazaro, sweet little chip into the box. Great play by Elisa with the right paw. Lazaro in front. That one knocked away at the last second. Well, that was exactly it. Get the ball up with some Aaron. Let the big guys fight it out. They did it. And they so nearly got something for their troubles. Good save from the goalkeeper, Johan Lizaralde, otherwise known as Lisa, making a crucial save. But look at this. Get it up with some air. Get the big boys on the end of it. They win it. Then it's a case of can someone get on the end of it? And this situation was the goalkeeper who didn't. Tell you what, good ball put back into the mixer as well. Some good defending from the home side. Lazaro had the inner ear being occupied by Gary Bailey there, putting the, the bigs with the action. <laughs> Listening exactly what you said, almost to a T. But a heads up play by Lisa just to push that ball to his right, as opposed to punching it out in front. Would have been dangerous and could have resulted in the first goal of this match. Ball behind Udik, but a great job of maintaining his footing. Rapolt almost took him down. Soto feeds on the left hand side. He wanted it back. Got four inside the 18 right now. Farolito, that shot was broken up at the last second. Pulling the trigger with that left foot. Blocked on the way through. Delgado had a clean look at target at the last second and was blocked. Which results in a corner kick. Now a yellow card here in the 34th minute. He's saying that was for something early up the pitch, but a number of yellow shirts have gone down. There was a, a brief penalty shot in the box. I think it was when Huras, Huras rather, Higuera went down. And have a look here, and I'll give you the moment when they shouted for the penalty. It's gone. He takes a shot there, and then this there. Mm. Is that a penalty? Does the defender get the ball? And then a great block, by the way. I think it was from Luca August. That might have been going in the corner. It's a great look from our crew, too, as you spotlighted it, too. In that situation, with our lead official being so far behind the play, is it better to err on the side of caution and let them play out? Well, you can't. You just can't give penalties for something you don't see. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, 
you know, in the days of VAR, you can rewind it, you can slow it down, and but but when you don't have VAR in these situations, and the referee has got to you know just see what he or she can see and call it, and you know you can complain, and that's exactly what El Farolito was saying, but. It's hard to see. We can't. I've seen it twice now, and I can't tell you <laughs> if the defender got the ball or not. So what chances has our referee got, old Mr. Pedro Vasquez Luna? We're into the 35th minute, and there's been no shortage of action here so far. Line drive that was screaming in, and this will be a throw in for Parolito. So both keepers have been busy now. Lisa with a couple fine stops on the other end. Enthusiastic crowd all wrapped up to deal with the elements. <laughs> not the nicest of days and not the biggest of crowds, but it's enthusiastic. And anyway, the players don't mind. They're here for the glory. They're here for the chance to get through to the next round. And that's what it's all about for them. And you've had a little bit of familiarity, I would say. It. I, I, I said that in air quotes, but with the U.S. Open Cup and obviously being an international player with Manchester United, what are some of the things that you're fond of about this this tournament, if you will? Any tournaments like this, and I, I played in the FA Cup in England, you just don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, the year that we won it in 1983, the very first defense was against a team four divisions lower, and we lost 2-0 oh, wow. away from home. And we were so confident, we were probably o well overconfident. Um, you just don't know what, and once things start to go wrong, it can compound, which is again why that... That first goal is so crucial to get you on the front foot, confidence up, and of course you sneak a second and then you're really looking good from then onwards. Well, both teams have had their chances so far. It's not a makeshift group, if you will. These teams and these coaches have familiarity as players colliding there. Going down was Rapult. But coming in like a missile was Benitez. I wouldn't pick on Repolt too often if I was uh, an El Fraudito player. He happens to be an MMA fighter. Coach fouls? Amir uh, Darabi saying he's one of the nicest guys you will ever meet, Big Pierre Repolt. But as an MMA Every fighter, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be messing with him. There he is. Look at him. He's six foot four, six foot three, whatever. <laughs> Great shot from our crew, as you can see. Scattered but muggy clouds in the wind. Blowing from right to left. But all in all, the, the pitch looks like it's in great condition and we haven't really had any kind of major impact with players slipping and sliding or anything else. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a game 30 minutes after this one, yeah. another game. So, you know, these, these, these turf pitches are built to take all the strains and the wear and tear. Again, they were supposed to have this match played at Boxer, but because the field conditions, it was canceled. The venue's just soggy. That's according to their head coach, Santiago Lopez of Parlito. And you were talking a few minutes ago about the fact these teams have to play a number of games to get to where they are. Woodick, Zaro. On the collection here, and Littleton with that right-footed punch, and Lisa unable to gobble it up. And this will result in a corner kick for International San Francisco. Good save from the keeper, gets it out of trouble. I was going to say it took four games, I think, for International San Francisco to get here. They scored 19 goals on the way and conceded just one. So this team in black and white, they know how to find the back of the net. It's the second one of the match, this corner kick, as that header is elevated. A long ways up, and we're chance towards net. Shots right now are nearly even, Gary, mm. five apiece, but International San Francisco does have two on target. Yeah, they're, they're sort of dominant in the air, and we saw there that was, it was nearly another chance to work the goalkeeper 
Johan Lizaralde, the Colombian Lisa. And that's, I think, the difference for me between the two teams, is that they can both play good football, but international San Francisco, they are very, very dangerous at set pieces. Pretty good movement here. El Parolito, Uric, peeled this one back on that shot. Never had a chance to make its way towards the target on Keeley. Well, he's yet to make a save yet. Yeah, he's had a few things flash across his goal. He's had a couple of shots blocked by his defenders, but you're right, he hasn't actually had to make a save. His counterpart, Lisa, had to make one or two important ones. So you would say on the balance of it, slightly a slight advantage for international San Francisco but you know what it's all about getting the goals isn't it it's right. all about getting through to the next round you can you can get hammered sneak a goal go through and that's that's what the record book shows results each based industry that we're in but especially in cups there's no recovery like a league situation it's one and done Zaro pushes this out wide Argast Head up all the way, make a move against Ulrich. It's taken out just outside the 18. Tell you what, that was awfully close. Did he dive though? Did, was there contact? Because he got up very quickly as if he had. Let's have a look at this. I'm curious to see. Yeah, Javier K was beside himself. Yeah. This is Luca Agost. No, there's no win. <laughs> you caught that, Gary. You do. You certainly that's, did. That's one of the best dives I have seen in a long time. That that should go. That should go into the uh, the Olympics uh, <laughs> diving <laughs> competition. That's which is why he got up so quickly. I think he was embarrassed, and then he was even more embarrassed that he had conned the referee in the process. I just hope that a goal isn't scored from this because it would be such a an injustice. Again, as a referee, you're, it's hard to see and. You know, you don't get the advantage we get of, of seeing it for a second time. Well, late goals and a half will certainly have an impact no matter the caliber of the league. This one played in, shot was directed out. So good defense from El Parolito, but it'll be a throw in for International San Francisco. But as you had mentioned, it's pretty good gamesmanship from Luca Aragast. With that swan dive, if you will. <laughs> Swim played away. El Parodito and Herbert Soto. The captain's badge in his right arm, pushing his forward over the right side to Benitez was open. Benitez with the cross. That one was nullified. And Soto driving his team forward from midfield. What a good little player this 27-year-old Colombian is. Left footer, he played his football in Venezuela and Colombia. And you can see the class when he's on the ball. Soto again, nice move with a pivot. One more. Looking again over on the left-hand side. That's a good feed. I'll tell you what, that was awfully close to a handball from Littleton. Dangerous. And Jamie Arias with a shot there. And this is where the home side are good. When they play football around the edge of the box, they've got some neat touches. They've tried some shots, and on each occasion they've been blocked. They've been very, very creative around the fringes of that box. Mazzaro wants to get it back to Fondi. Fans, just a heads up, dive deeper into the throws and drama, the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. Are you a big fan of Instagram, Gary? Not really. Would you have used it back in your playing days? <laughs> We'd have gotten into a lot of trouble if we had. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the things we were allowed to say and do back then, which you can't do now. Oh boy, not G-rated, Lisa. It's, it's not even that. We used to go for drinks with the press and right. they wouldn't report stories. Nowadays, press will report anything and everything and it's just a totally different landscape to what it was back in the day. Oh, yeah, I, I got to imagine, especially because of the paparazzi, right? Mm. Pictures while you're at at the stadium. 
on the pitch, in the locker room, out and about the pubs. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you could go to a pub back in the day, and, and you know the fans would have a drink with you sure. and a chat and all that. But also, we weren't that wealthy. We were famous like they are today, but we weren't wealthy. Right. And today, they, they get dropped off with a limo driver, and you know they go to the, the most expensive restaurants in town. Something only these players could probably dream of that we're seeing him. Keely let this thing go by. A strike not well attempted by Hugera. You know, it's it is fascinating because the evolution you mentioned just with your playing days alone, but you know, with the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup being in its 108th edition, that just says a lot though, because the, the game of soccer here in North America, it is it's so expansive because you, you mentioned earlier, collegiate players, division one, two, or three can't compete in this just yet. But you have players that have competed at the Division One level. You have professionals. You have amateurs. It's a whole conglomerate. Mm. And it's growing so big in North America. I mean, Canada uh, has really come on strong at international level. The USA has always been fairly strong, but getting better. USA players are playing at a higher level. The leagues, the USL is a fantastic league, of course. MLS and this Open Cup. It really is. I mean, the quality just goes up a notch every single year, and it's, it's wonderful to see. And case in point, too, the ability to broadcast these matches as well, as Lazaro looks like he'll be in the book in the 45th minute. So we have a couple of yellow cards in this match. I would imagine with the way that this first half has gone, be anywhere from about three minutes of stoppage time. It's just a guesstimate by us. We'll wait and see. Really haven't had any kind of mundane sequences to the first 45 minutes of action. It's been exciting. There's been chances at both ends. Nothing's got through yet, but I think something is likely to break at some stage. Lisa again been called upon. Fondi was lurking behind him. Polton had this one watched into the crest of Keeley. That was a difficult proposition there for Repolton Keeley. Kinney. And tight quarters on the left hand side to Autran out wide. Fondi getting a few fans on their feet. Matt trying to navigate, manipulate the defense. That one got past Lisa near the goal line, but stays out. Wow, that was close. That was a great ball into the box. Just nobody in a white shirt could get a foot on it. The goalkeeper seemed to be flapping a little bit. And that probably is the, one of the best chances of this first half. Once again, falling to international San Francisco. Whistle blown for the end of the first half. I'm just wondering who was in the box, whether it was Leo Lazaro. This ball comes across. Keeper misses it there, and it just comes off somebody's thigh. Yeah, it was Leo Lazaro, number six. And that, if he'd expected that, he wasn't expecting the keeper to miss it, but uh, you, have sort of have to, you have to expect players in front of you to miss it. You have to be ready. That's another good chance for the team in white that goes a begging. Well, shots in this first half. El Parito had eight. International San Francisco had seven, but San Francisco had two of them on target. Garrett, before we go to recess, first half thoughts. Yeah, it has been in favor of the visitors, International SF. I thought they looked more dangerous, had a lot of, of, of balls into the box that caused problems, but there were occasions when El Farolito around the edge of the box, some neat play. They got some shots and they got blocked. Maybe they'll get through second half. So still a very finely balanced game. We'll wait for that patiently on the other side of things. We'll get you some stats. Some highlights. We'll talk about this match and also last year's championship bout. End of the first half of action here. International San Francisco, El Palito. Our score is 45 minutes in the books.
get the address on the
Back here at Ohlone Soccer Stadium in Fremont, California with Gary Bailey. I'm David Gascon. Thanks for hanging out with us on a damp Wednesday afternoon. El Farolito in International San Francisco. Scoreless at the end of the first half of action. Gary, a uh, lot to chew on in this match because the action's been good. And it's been back and forth. It has, it's been exciting. There's been opportunities on both sides. No breakthrough yet, you always want a goal. The moment there's a goal, suddenly there's a panic on the side that's losing and there's the confidence on the side that's winning. So that does really shift things and hopefully we do get a goal early on in the second half. But it is a finely balanced game and I think that's what everyone enjoys, a cup match that has you biting your nails. We pushed forward a couple of days ago because of daylight savings, but we rewind the clock to last year, September the 7th, of 2022, Orlando City SC, Sacramento Republic FC. This is a tightly contested affair, but a surprise for a lot of people because Sacramento came out of the USL Championship and they were game. They certainly were game. There was no score at half time. And as I mentioned, they knocked off three Euro, uh, MLS sides to get to this level. They beat San Jose Earthquakes, LA Galaxy and Sports in Kansas City. So, you know, you've got, you got to think Orlando City knew that they were in for a battle. They had a tough first half. Here's Sac Republic on the attack, threatening that Orlando City goal. But it all happened in the second half and it, it happened for the home side. It's just a little bit too much pressure. And they were always battling a little bit, turnover ball in a dangerous position. Yeah, Torres twice Brilliant. the closing into this contest. A bad giveaway, you mentioned the pressure. And then all of a sudden one mistake in Orlando in the driver's seat. Yeah, Facundo Torres with a great finish there. And then the pressure was on. They're going to start throwing bodies forward to get an equalizer. They got caught. There's a penalty. Long ball in there. And Casey's going to give away a penalty on, on Mitchell. Have a look at the build up to it. Boom, takes him out there and feels that he got the ball. But have a look at it again. Now referee says penalty up steps. Who else? Facundo Torres, number two. Yeah, so two goals in the matter of five minutes that really broke the heart of Sacramento. A little icing on the cake as they added the third one, but Torres doing the damage and the lifting for Orlando in a game that was tight throughout. Rather unfortunate, but Orlando was the better team on this day. Yeah, and they showed it towards the end. They were clinical, and this is the Mitchell with the, the third. Fatiella just can't reach it. It's a lovely finish because it's out of the goalkeeper's reach unless he takes a couple of steps. Hits it nice and early. Fatiello stretches, can't get there. Game set and match, but great credit to Sac Republic for knocking out three MLS sides to get to the final and going, I think, something like the 70th minute before they were eventually put to the sword. Yeah, Torres' game-winning goal, the first one in that contest, in the 75th minute, added one on the PK in the 80th minute, and the rest was history. 3-0 was the final score. The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, the highlights that we had for this opening 45 minutes of play. Yeah, high ball, thought it was the goalkeeper's ball there, three yards up. But some good defending from Nikolai Littleton just saving the day. And then down to the other end, ball bouncing around a little bit. This is a, a shot from Matt Fundy, just goes wide from the big six foot one ex Chicago fire striker. And it was end to end. Some lovely football coming from the home side as well as they stretch play out wide. And it was the captain there just getting his toe to the ball, Jack Callan, 24 year old, grew up in Australia. Another high ball goalkeeper off his line, but look how he goes over the top. Fortunately, no damage done. And he's number six, Leo Lazaro gets the ball and then gets the free kick on the other. Now this is the save coming in from the home side keeper, Lisa, good save, not back in. And they just can't finish it off the international SF. And eventually the whistle blows. Now we go back the other end again. <laughs> As we said, it's a shot blocked. Is there a penalty appeal? Well, there's appeal. Is it a penalty? Not given a good block there by Luca August. 
And they get on the other end, and we get more excitement there as the ball gets whipped across. This is a great chance. Fell to Leo Lazaro. He wasn't expecting it because the keeper missed it. Couldn't finish it off. What a chance for the visiting side. Now Lazaro and Kinney were both there inside near the six. Could not find Tuan. As you see the shots right now, eight apiece, but the two on target for International San Francisco. I'll tell you what, Gary, like for as good as this match was in the first 45 minutes of play, Although the possession says one thing, what do your eyes tell you? Well, it's the shots on target, it's the efforts around the box, the high balls into the box. It was all international. San Francisco looked the more dangerous of the two sides. There's four yellow cards, by the way, two on each team. So got to be careful with the next set of tackles from those players who are on yellows. But possession doesn't really mean that much. It's what you do with it. And I felt that the visitors, International SF, looked a little bit more dangerous. I'll tell you what, they will switch sides right now. But one thing with El Parolito, at least for the first 45 minutes, they were really strong on the counter. When they were pinned back a little bit, International San Francisco had their way. All of a sudden, a miscue. El Parolito was off to the races, and you can see where their speed will come into play as the second half now is officially underway. Yeah, so much of that first half for the home side was driven by their number seven and captain, Herbert Soto, the Colombian. There he is in the middle of your picture. If they get the ball to him, he can really be creative. Again, how this is situated too with the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. As you win and you play on. The elimination game is completely different than league play. Delgado would have got wide. So you have the chance. Professionals will be playing, amateurs engaged right now. You have some that have played at the highest of highs. Is that attempt right there in a would be miss on the bicycle kick from Mugetta as he goes into the box, but a whistle and a foul because of the attempt. Mm. Lucky not to get a yellow card for that. A lot of leverage he was using. Uh, yeah, he got it. It's a dangerous, dangerous kick. Let's have a look at it again, and we'll just see how low Littleton ducks here. Doesn't get too low. That foot is very, very high. And normally that would get you a yellow. Lucky to get off with that one. A little bit of smoke as it was casted away to begin this match. More here in the second half. Big thanks to all the fans that are watching this match on Bleacher Report, courtesy of YouTube today. Might have to open this thing up because there's a great deal of chatter in the chat room, Gary. So there could be a handful of questions coming your way from the audience. Well, happy to take them if they want. It is exciting cup football. It does get all the fans riled up and dreaming of big days ahead and big possibilities. There's a number seven again. Little magic man in the middle there. Herbert Soto. Kenny with a heel stomp there. Kenny over the back of Soto. Benitez with a couple fine chances in the first half. We'll see if there's carryover for him in the second. Just a reminder, if this match ends in a draw at the end of 90 minutes, we will have extra time. And if that doesn't resolve it, we will have penalties. Wrong with a little bonus soccer. <laughs> there we are. A little tongue in cheek, but I remember mentioning a few days ago about the idea of golden goals and haven't had that for quite a while. Yeah, they were about, was it 15, 20 years ago, Golden Goal was in, and then yeah. I think the TV channels didn't like it because you didn't know when the game was going to end, so you couldn't plan your adverts and everything. So in the end, they said, no, let's just have a set 15 minutes each way, then we know exactly what's coming up. That's the substitutions, the whole smash. Great ball, Jamie, great ball. Good job of winning it there for a moment, Kinney. This one touched back Autran, and now he is in reverse mode. A little bit of pressure from El Parolito, putting International San Francisco in a bind. And maybe that's what the coach Santiago has said to them. Get out there, get on the front foot nice and early. You're at home. And try and put International San Fan on the back foot, because when they come at you with the height they've got, they're going to cause you problems. So 
rather you go with them. And his counterpart, Amir Darabi, Dr. Darabi, the head coach of International San Francisco, putting this group together. He feels extremely good about him, in particular, Matt Fondy. He's been all over the action the first 45 plus minutes now, carrying over to the second half. Yeah. Quality player, Matt Fondy. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but he, um, he runs a non-profit organization in San Francisco called Oakland Genesis. So that's what he does for most of his day. Ex-professional at a very, very high level at Chicago Fire. What it goes down, that'll be a foul. Pedro Vasquez, Luna, the lead official today. And it is tough just thinking about how these clubs are assembled. It's not like all these players are able to participate and play and practice all the time. They have their regular everyday lives, if you will. Some that have been rostered, not on these two teams respectively, but on others, away for a couple days because of vacation or because of injuries, <laughs> because of other commitments. It does sound strange talking of, of football and saying somebody's away on vacation right. and misses an Open Cup yeah. match, but it has been known to happen. Zaro in agony, brought to his knees by Higuera. And he's pointing at the referee saying, well, come on, you gotta do something about it. Let's have a look how it all happens. Logan Kinney just losing possession. And there it is. It doesn't seem to be too serious, but I think Leo Lazaro just trying to milk it for what it's worth. <laughs> I've seen a couple of those in the first half. I still think Luga Argus dive when he wasn't touched at still. It's <laughs> a great catch oh. by you. You caught it in real time, too. You didn't need the instant replay in slow-mo. This one played in. There's those high balls into the box again, causing problems for El Farolito. Benitez with some speed here. No numbers. He's waiting for a trailer. Benitez with a nice move, trying to play that one through to Delgado. No connection. The ghetto goes down. And for good measure, Soto took a shot. Lots of debate going on there, but the yellow card has been issued, and that seems to have gone to Luga August. Good skills here out wide. Trying to just thread that ball through. Doesn't quite come off there. And then there's a the collision. It's a dangerous position, this, just outside the box. It's the sort of distance that most free kick strikers prefer. You don't want to get too close because you can't get the ball over and then down in time. And this distance, about 25 yards out, is the perfect distance to get it over the wall with some topspin, bring it down under the crossbar. And they've got the skills, El Farolito. Let's see what they can do with them. Mind you, it's a big wall. They're all six foot four. Right. <laughs> see who takes this. Delgado was there. Martinez. Nurek. Kiliana's line looking for it. Delgado and that attempt rather feeble. I think it took a deflection on the way through. Maybe he was going for the other corner. Everybody expected him to go over the wall. He took one look at everybody at six foot four and thought, I'd rather go around the wall. And someone stuck out a leg and just blocked that. I say my first thought was maybe he anticipated them all elevating and shoot underneath them. Could be. That could have been a thought. Here at Ohlone College. Ohlone Stadium is the setting today. 
clubs were supposed to be playing at Boxer, but because of the field conditions, no chance of that happening. Soggy, wet, a bit muddy, so change of scenery and perfect conditions today, despite the fact there's a little bit of rain and wind. This corner kick, a dangerous one. Immediately after the restart, I'll tell you what, Sergio Martinez wanted that back. He was curling around Rick, but Rick didn't have his head up. Approaching here in the 55th minute. Shots right now, nearly even, 9-8 El Parlito has the advantage there, a slight one, but none of their nine shots have made their way on toward target yet towards Mason Keeley. That's resulted in a stop. I think that's the diff biggest difference between the two teams is we've seen Lisa in the one goal have to make two or three saves. There's been two or three other occasions when the ball was bobbling and easily have been tucked away for a goal. The other side, Mason Keeley, nothing really to deal with as yet. But the scores are still level. All that, all that information, as of now, it's 0-0, zero, it's zero, zero, everything's even. And to be fair, I think second half, they played a bit better, El Farolito. More on the front foot, more attacking. Kenny with a nice move. Lazaro. Ooh, bad pass. That one right behind his teammate, Autrin. Autrin was expecting it up towards his right-hand side. That one just hits the back. The Cancola. You know, despite the fact they haven't had a shot on target yet, it's not like El Parolito's getting cute with their attempts. Just unfortunate for them, they've gone wide. They've been blocked on the way through. Yeah, a lot of block shots, but they haven't sort of crafted a really good opportunity as yet, whereas I think International San Francisco have had two, maybe three 50-50 chances to have scored. Ulrich out wide. Delgado. Had it teed up. That shot just over the crossbar. And the chances continue to come. And Keeley, again, as we had mentioned at the top of the show, at six foot five. Thought about elevating as we take a peek at this again, Gary. I think this is Hida Seguero. Just, just play it back for him here. And he has a shot outside of the foot. Bends. Tell you what, that is not far away. That's a fantastic effort there. Just. Set up neatly for him by Ricardo Delgado. Now, whether the goalkeeper would have got there if that was top corner, difficult to say, but it wasn't far away. Fusion U23 tonight against Appalachian FC. North Carolina Fusion U23s. And Appalachian FC, member of the NPSL. Got a bunch of games today and tonight. FC Motown, Manhattan SC. Again, a lot of the action available on Bleacher Report, also on YouTube. He got tripped up. Couldn't maintain possession, though. Get up with the nice intercept. So at least with anything, El Parolito applying more pressure and getting more results out of said pressure than they did in the opening 45 minutes. I think that's sensible, A, because you're creating chances for yourself, and B, you're keeping all those tall players away from your box and getting set pieces. That's where they were so dangerous first half, International SF. Oh, nice touch pass, the heel from Lazaro. And this one couldn't find Audrey. Unfortunate to him, but a little bit of dazzle from Lazaro, who's played exceptional today. And Jonathan Mosquera just coming across and booting that into the stand to make 100% sure. Work. 
Rivera. Kinney. Surveying for a moment. Took way too much time there. Had a moment of opportunity, but it was picked off. And Benitez streaking down the left-hand side. Benitez waiting for reinforcements. But you see a white and black jerseys all over the place. And nothing on the other end, though, for Aparolito. It's a good transition. Here's Soto. Soto. Lazaro went down, but no whistle, no foul. He gets up without being hurt much, so <laughs> he was just trying to get the referee to give him a, a free kick so he could take a breather. Delgado, Ulrich, back to Delgado, real estate. Delgado with that left foot. That was nullified on the way through. Once again, good blocking from International SF. There hasn't been one shot getting through in their goalkeeper as yet, but good move again from El Fraulita. Much better in the second half. And there's a few white shirts down. You just wonder if, if they're getting a little bit gassed. This has been played at a big pace. Not all these players are 100% fit yet, and that could play a part. So I expect to see substitution sooner than later, especially for the team in black and white. Good job, though, for Kenny staying in place of that shot from Delgado. Now, Perlito had the advantage in terms of possession in the first half, 60 to 40. Although, they did not have the better of the scoring opportunities. Second half, flip with the strip, Entre. Across this one and found a home on the left hand side. No numbers though for International San Francisco. Fondi trying to craft his way through some traffic, but one on two, it's a tough proposition for anybody. Yeah, good ball from Dylan Outra, and they had an option on his right hand side, and he went to Fondi in the in the box, who managed to control it. As you said, wasn't much support, but what they do have is once again a dangerous set piece. All the big guys coming forward. And that's an issue for the home side. They've got to try and get tight to their markers, who generally are much bigger than them. You see a Pierre Repolt there. He's much bigger than the man marking him. Fondi, that header. See the expression on his face as a slight headbutt into the fencing on the north side. Did not hit it flush, and certainly not accurate. No, it is, in fact, Pierre Repolt here, the big number five, who, who goes up and wins it. Now, Fondi's simply got to head that square, and they're waiting in the middle of the box. There would have been three of them, four, five, and 17, all waiting. Jack Callan there, Pierre Repolt had gone back, and Javier Rivera, three of them waiting for a header back. It Lizarro. never came. It's a great look, and you think that's the critical part, right, Gary, where you're in close proximity like that. How hard is it for a player to think, pass as opposed to shoot like he did i think he was trying to pass to be honest with you i mean the options are much much better to do that and he just misheaded it which is why he went and banged his head into the <laughs> fence you know it was uh, it was just a little bit of lack of skill at the crucial moment benitez given chase the transition no for international san francisco has been strong on the defensive end kenny on the motor And Parolito nearing its way towards an expected goal of one. Or international San Francisco not there yet. 21 combined shots between the two teams. But right now, not a single one on target yet for El Parolito. Nine shots, two on target for international San Francisco. But those both came in the opening half. So it looks like we'll have a substitution. Couple of them. Daniel Butrago coming into the match. They call him Burro. It's according to his head coach, Santiago Lopez. They do that where they. Butrago coming in. He's wearing number 10. And these kits for El Parolito. 65th minute. The substitution. 
Javier Calle also coming in as well. Calle, a Colombian. Along with Putrago, both Colombian players. You had mentioned it, Gary, at the Open. Colombian, Mexican, Paraguay. There's a lot of international flavor here for mm. El Paradito. Brazilian as well. In fact, only one player from the USA. That's Jamie Arias. Everybody else from mostly South America. In fact, all from South America and Central America with Mexico. Mm. So yeah, very international side. And you can see the way they play. It's very touch. It's very creative. And uh, it's more physical when you get to international SF. They only have a have one player from South America. That's Leo Lazaro from Colombia. They have Javier Rivera from Spain, and Jack Callan is sort of Australian, USA born, the captain, but Australian raised in Tasmania. But everybody else is USA, and they're bigger, stronger. Maybe they don't have quite the same level of touch and play that El Farolito have, but whatever they don't have, they make up for physical commitment. Keely will see this one all the way through. You get it, just trying to turn and fire that one in a threatening way towards target, but I never had a chance. <laughs> so Santiago Lopez going to his bench for a couple of reserves. Lisa will play this thing around a Soto. Herbert, who's played well in this contest. He was tripped up. Launching with the foul there. Soto again, such great close in skills for the little man. Very well balanced player. He has certainly showcased his agility. Looked to be offside, and that's exactly the case. The far side official with the arm and flag up. It's important time now for the managers. One's already made his play, Santiago Lopez, making two changes, although probably will make more as the game goes on. Now we just wait to see what Amir Darabi will do on the other side. Because maybe those changes can win you the match, maybe they can lose you the match. Either way, you get into that point where a goal could very well decide this match. You think it just might take one to settle this match. If you're just joining us, we unfolded the format of the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. Not a golden goal situation once we get into extra time. We'll have the extra session, but then also if it does continue to play that way into a draw, things will be settled with PKs. Fani's been all over the pitch so far on this one. He was asking for it. Autred had his right arm up. We got a collision next to the goal post. Lisa goes down. There's a coming together of bodies there. Commitment from both sides. The goalkeeper brave as could be. Lisa, let's have a look exactly how this goes down. Goalkeeper's got to come out. Play actually collides with the post, Luga August. That's how he gets hurt. I don't know if he was expecting that goal post to give way at all. He didn't break <laughs> it at any point during that run. Those two changes for El Farolito, it sees the end of Ricardo Delgado. He was going to be their hope for getting goals, but as you quite rightly say, they have brought on Javier Calle and Daniel Buitrago, Moro. So clearly they feel that these are the players who can get the breakthrough they need. Amir Darabi has yet to go to his bench. It's a nice play there by Kinney. Kenny just celebrating a birthday a couple weeks back on February the 15th. He's now at the ripe old age of 22. Kutrago 
nearly had a hit on that one as it goes out. That'll be a throw in though for El Parolito. Martinez. He's Mexican, Sergio. Playing Peru's first division. Kenny on the intercept. 70th minute here from Fremont, California. Match number one for both these squads in round number one. Touch passing Littleton. Got it from Fondi, Littleton. So the blue and gold surrounding him rather quickly. Lazaro goes down and with Drago, not really happy with that call, is he, Gary? Yeah, Leo Lazaro does something the professionals do often when they when they feel they've been tripped, they grab the ball, and that forces a referee to either give you a handball against <laughs> you or to give the free kick, and most refs will give the free kick. It's minimal contact here. Just a little bit there, but straight away grabs the ball, and referee has to give the decision. A couple more substitutions. El Parolito. In international San Francisco. Well behaved for the most part. We've had a handful of yellow cards on both ends. Lazaro. Just missing Fondi. See, Leo Lazaro had his head in his hands. He thought maybe someone was going to get on the end of that and smash it towards goal. Everyone missed it, but at least again, they had the set piece. And almost every time it comes in, it causes problems. And look at the difference in height between those in the white shirts and those in the gold shirts. 37 combined fouls so far in this contest. Lazaro, I'll tell you what, he was lurking on that weak side. Ball didn't get his way. Lisa skies up for it. Nice push from Soto. With Drago. Urik on the right hand side. Urik trying to get around Argast. He does. That's good defense. Very good defense. And all starts with the goalkeeper. Lisa comes out and takes a great cross under all sorts of pressure from those big players. And a, a, a ball straight away to his captain, Herbert Soto. He gets the counter attack going. And before you know it, the other end of the pitch, and now it's the home side who have a set piece. So we count the blue and gold inside the 18. Got five of them there here on that service. One just a bit too tall for Martinez. It'll be a throw in though for Parolito. John Quinones is in the contest now for El Parolito. Nickname him Saya. He's from Colombia. Number 24. Volleyed around, picked up for a moment. Calle. on the service. Delivery with nobody around though for El Parodito. Let's see what International San Francisco does in transition. Trying to counter, still plenty of time to go in this contest. 74th minute. It's a good time to score. That doesn't give your opposition much time to get one back. Just looking back to that cross going into the box for El Farolito. There was a whole bunch of their players at the near post. The ball went to the far post. There was no one there. Opportunity lost. But you just wonder if there's a, a fitness difference. In the second half, it's been the home side looked a lot sharper, a lot quicker. And International San Francisco have struggled. They haven't made a substitution yet that I can see, which surprises me. We've got Carlos Quintero on the bench. He's a former ex Farolito player, Colombian. He's a good option. Gabriel Borges from Brazil. We've got five or six players. Luke Pritchard from Great Britain. A number of players they can bring on if the coach 
decides to do that. Yeah, Tyler Wall is also available, but yeah, to your point, could be a situation where Amir Darabi's waiting for extra time. Well, you've got you to get there first. You take a risk by not getting fresh legs on. Benitez. That one was struck a couple of times. Autumn. Tries to play this through for Fondi, but Fondi does not have that extra gear to get it in time. Saya there colliding at the last second with Keeley. As you see, Perez in now for K. 23 for 19, making it official. So Perez, also Colombian. Have your K done for the day. So a couple more Colombians enter the fray. So we've checked our way into the 76th minute. We have a few matches that are starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. And then a bunch that will be staggered throughout the night. Again, available on Bleacher Report, also on Bleacher Report's YouTube channel. Much like this one with first touch getting underway at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. There has been a little rain, but it hasn't been a downpour. Several sprinkles, but all in all, it's been, it's been good. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good day out. A little bit cold for the spectators, probably, but for the players, <laughs> it's a perfect temperature. A touch windy every time you see the flags, they are flapping away, but... It's a different second half for the home side. They have looked so much better, and they look sprightly and more likely to score. Soto had some space, but pushed that thing too out in front of himself. Callum there to get in front of it. Saya. Saya wanted it back. Soto had his head up, but no lane to feed him to. Argost again there with good positioning. Looking at the white shirts, they, they, they look tired, their heads are down, they're struggling a little bit for breath, whereas those in gold and blue look a lot sprightlier. Gary's not talking about me, even though I'm wearing the white shirts. So I can assure you that. <laughs> the extra juice here, we'll see if it pays off. Okay. Let's see if he gets this back. He's backing up a couple feet. With Drago, poor entrance there. It will be a goal kick. He's clearly overhit that by a long, long way. Has Boro and Butrago. Now, are we going to get some substitutions for the away side? Because there's a few weary legs out there, and we can't see anything at the moment as to whether the, the coach is bringing anybody on. Big thanks to everybody that's been chiming in over the YouTube channel, courtesy of Bleacher Report. Always appreciate the participation, the engagement, and the support of these players. As we mentioned, professionals, the amateurs, all colliding. And the collegiate players, the NCAA, not able to participate at this moment in time. But if you are familiar with North American soccer at the collegiate level, Division one contest get underway in the fall. Soto gave it up, wanted it back at the last second though, was broken up. Sai. Entrance was decent. Defense from Littleton, that much better. Now Farolito keeping the pressure on. With Drago, Soto, Benitez. Benitez, a touch passing Kinney, trying to use his wide frame. He does to his advantage. 
So they've been bending a little mm. bit, International San Francisco, but not broken yet. Well, certainly under pressure. Soto, not a lot of juice on that pass. Well, there's some awesome fresh legs on Carlos Quintero's come on for the visiting side that I can see. So maybe he can bring some fresh legs to the situation. And a bit of brightness too on the pitch. I haven't seen this for the first 79 plus minutes. Fondi going in, awfully close with Lisa the keeper. Now Lisa committed himself and didn't get there. And I'm just wondering whether the defender stopped Fondi because it looked like it was an open net for the big man up front. Again, the strength of international San Fran is when they can get those high balls into the box. We haven't seen an ambitious approach like that in quite a while from international San Francisco, but Littleton nearly put that ball right on the mark. 81st minute. Lazaro. Drago. Possession. Kenny will just feed this back to Lisa. And the expectations for clubs are one thing, especially the MLS and USL championship teams, but the amateur ones, there's a lot of hope. A lot of hope that you can get a good matchup in the first round, make your way into the second round with no harm from your roster. And all of a sudden, one goal could be the difference maker. So I had it for a moment, and then he didn't. That's all the home side now. They're bombing down that right-hand side, getting balls into dangerous areas, and I just think something's going to eventually work for them if they can keep this pressure up. 24 combined shots in this contest, though. El Parolito's got 13, 11 for international San Francisco, but El Parolito still has not had one on target yet. Go back to a previous sequence, Gary. Oh, this is the head, and I want to see who, how this gets cleared. I think the defender gets in the way. The goalkeeper doesn't get there. Fondi heads it against the defender, so that's the case. That was a vital bit of defensive work by the home side. And of course, Oakland Roots waiting in the next round. So whoever wins this has got themselves a match against USL opposition. And in Dylan Outran's case, against his old side and Matt Fondi, both ex-Oakland Roots for International San Fran. Brazos Valley Calvary, Tulsa Athletic playing later on tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern. Ventura County Fusion and Capo FC. They're the nightcap, 10 o'clock Eastern. Gary and myself will be hanging out with you for that endeavor. And fans do not forget the 2023 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup continues with more exciting twists and turns over the coming weeks. Make sure you stay up to date with feature articles and the full schedule. Just go to www.usopencup.com. Do it right now. Well, looks like there's a change. Luga Agast was injured and had to come off. And it looks like Gamal Campaore, the man from Burkina Faso, is going to come on. Another tall player. Campaore, as you, as you mentioned coming in, didn't look like he was even going to touch the pitch. And his warm-up still on, jersey untucked and not settled. But now he's into the fold in the 84th minute. And we haven't seen a lot of players for International San Francisco warming up on the sidelines either, Gary. So that element of seeing, standing, watching, but not moving up and down, getting the blood flowing, now he's going to ramp it up. With Drago. Ooh, Soto, he might have caught an elbow up into his jawline. That was close. They got a player going tumbling down, too. Oh, 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 there's trouble here. That's a punch. And if the referee can verify it with an assistant referee, that's a red card. 
The ref doesn't see it, he can't give it. He's looking at his assistant ref. And now he's gonna go and have a chat with him and say, was, did you see a punch? Let's have a look at it again in slow-mo. Let's have a look. He threw a hand back to the captain. And he's got the red card, I think. He's a crucial player, Herbert Soto, the captain. Murphy's saying, you have to leave the pitch now. You can't go and have a conversation about it. Pedro Vasquez Luna, he did check with his assistant ref. He's, and the assistant ref seemed to indicate that he felt he saw an elbow or a hand go back into the face of the international San Francisco player. Now the ref, assistant ref is saying, I'm not going to discuss it. Off you go. We said this match could turn on something, an error, a mistake, a great moment. Could it turn on this red card? Yeah, Pedro Vasquez Luna, the lead official today. Peter Hansen, Ovik Dutt, and Bruno Sanchez, also the complimentary pieces, as Soto has seen the gate now with the red card in the 85th minute. You did see a little bit of a hand back from him, Herbert Soto, but I couldn't see clearly if that hand actually made contact or not. But the player went down holding his face. Now, you can't always judge that either because players hold their face when they get hit in their stomach sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was definitely, there was some smoke there. And the assistant ref said, yep, he saw a hand go back and hence the red card. I'll be curious too because the previous play before that, Soto had caught contact towards his upper body, torso or, mm. or neck gyre. And I wonder if that was just retribution. They thought he could get away with it. You can't, you can't do that. You can't have retribution. You've got to get on with the game and leave what was. We get to see a chance. Let's have a, and this is just after it. Can't actually see if there was contact already. Oh, yes, this is when he comes back and gives the red card. It says, you gave an elbow in his face. Oh, well, no matter what we think about it or what we can determine, it's, it's 10 against 11 now, and we're heading towards possible extra time. Well, that'll shape up to be something fascinating because you look at the situation now, not only with the personnel, but Gary, you had highlighted this a lot in the second half as the tired legs for international San Francisco. Mm. Now they have the advantage being up a player. Up a player, they've made two substitutions, so maybe they will get... Let's have a look. Are we going to see it? Look on the left-hand side of the screen there. He hits his arm back, but I don't see it going to a face. I saw it going to a body. Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you, hand-hand. <laughs> like I say, players get hit in their stomach, they grab their face. That's all <laughs> part of the game these days. Wow. Oh, now it's Aguera down. Huda Aguera made a tackle, a crucial tackle. He's slow to get up. So, wow, it's all happening. <laughs> no, no goals. It's anything we're missing. <laughs> yeah. But... To the credit of International San Francisco, they have sold some fouls. Yep. Or well, they've sold some phantom contact plays. <laughs> that one from Luger in the first half, still one of the best I've seen for a long time. Yeah. It's like he tripped over the... Tripped over the box on entry. Benitez. Perez. Yeah, some more diving going on, some more theatrics. Yellow card for number five, Pierre Repult. It's in the 88th minute. The coaching staff are saying, well, hang on a sec, I was one a red and the other not. I didn't, see, I didn't see a hand go up or anything, I just saw a bumping of bodies, so I don't think it was a red card on Pierre Repult, but he needs to be careful. Don't get involved. Side swipe with the officials having their backs turned. <laughs> Might be a spot here for El Parolito to go for it. We've got a lot more congestion, a lot more stalling and stopping of action here in the second half. So we will be afforded a decent amount of time in terms of stoppage here in this second half of activity. Keep in mind, if it does end in full time in a draw, we will have extra time. Ah! 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 
trying to turn the corner. He did not make yeah. it possession. He's claiming he was pushed and shoved off the ball. Referee says no. Didn't see anything. A lot of players do fall over when they get the faintest of touches, and referees more and more these days are, are not falling for it. They're waiting to see if there's proper contact. I'll tell you one thing, if anything, Muscara for El Parolito picked up a yellow card early in this contest, and International San Francisco has not really put the onus on him to make any hard challenges and to get into trouble and potentially pick up a second yellow card. 90th minute. It's Mason Keeley, we haven't seen the goalkeeper do that much. Even though in this second half, El Farolito have had a number of good creative opportunities on the edge of the box, they just haven't got it through and tested the goalkeeper. Keep in mind, we will not have golden goal, but extra time will provide us with two 15-minute periods. The chance will also provide you with some stats and some highlights. If we can afford it, of course, just depending on the situation. Keep in mind, there's a match that's supposed to be played here right after this match. Maloney Stadium. I think they, they said there might, there might be a half an hour gap between minutes, it. Yeah. 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 So they're going to use up all of that 30 with extra time, and there could be penalties <laughs> afterwards. So. <laughs> Unless something happens in these dying moments. Littleton. Oh. It'll be offside. And there's the big man there from Burkina Faso, in case you're wondering where that is. That's somewhere in Central Africa. He should have lots of energy. Gamal Campaore. Just coming on 10 minutes ago. Oh, he's playing a good intercept. That comes international San Francisco Fani. He was nudged off that ball. And I said that politely, but that was a Difficult challenge being displayed. Martinez in the middle of all of it. Once again, the referee doesn't buy it at all. He says, no, that's just two bodies coming together. It's all fair. Fondi felt that he'd been knocked off the ball just as he was about to make a crucial pass. <laughs> 33 years of age, Matt Fondi. Maybe just beginning to feel the effects of all those years of playing for Chicago Fire, Oakland Roots, and a whole number of other clubs. He's Moved around a bit. Yeah, since 2011, he's been across the map. Fondi has. And wouldn't he love to uh, sort of, in the twilight of his career, have a really good open cup oh, run? Wow. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Stoppage time right now. We'll get extra time if need be if this match is scoreless. Saya has it. It's a couple players that were hanging around the top of the box as he gave that shot on goal. The first one of the match and a fine tune up for Keeley. Good save from Keeley and good shot as well. It's amazing, even with 10 men, El Farolito have been controlled, they've been organized, they've got some good touch play. Good strike here, look at that. Goalkeeper gets down with his feet to block it. El Farolito had some quality chances in the first half, but again, that's the first one on target of the entire affair for them. Not to say that they have lacked opportunity, that's not the case. They have 14 shots so far, now the first one on net. Oh, 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 anticipating that ball to come to him was Lazaro, but 
That was a cardinal mistake, and Martinez is there to intercept. Withra goes at the top of the box, and he wanted it. Oh, they still look sharper, don't they? On the home side, El Farolito, more comfortable on the ball, knocking it around. It's the team in white who is struggling to keep up with the pace, even though they have one man more. Now, are we going to see drama with the corner in the last minute? We'll see. This one bends in. Zidrago was there trying to elevate. He could not connect on it, though. Big Gamal Campeore getting his head to the ball to clear the danger. There's another player down, and there's more finger pointing going on. This is a busy game for the poor referee, Pedro Vasquez Luna. He wasn't this active early on. I think as it gets towards the end, both teams know that just one goal settles it, and so everything gets a bit chippy and a bit tense. A little bit more shoving, a little bit more play acting, perhaps. It seems to be Leo Lazaro got knocked to the ground somehow. And again, poor, it's very, so difficult for the poor referee without the benefit of Slow-mo replays or VAR, there's not, not much they can do if they don't see something. Let's see if this is one final attempt in the corner for El Paralito. Zorro on the touch. An opportunity for them to switch the pitch, and they do, and that'll do it for full time. Fani was asking for more of it, but not the case. Two halves, no goals, a ton of quality scoring opportunities on both ends, and one red card for El Parolito. Right now, we got extra time coming up. This match, Gary, mm. as good as it has been, it's been scoreless. That's the only thing it hasn't had, is that everything else, hasn't it? Yellow cards, red cards, chances, arguments, debates, etc. And now the big question is another 30 minutes. Both these teams are done if they're at full fitness at the moment, and players were looking really tired towards the end. So who's got enough commitment and desire and energy to survive the next 30 minutes? And we do have a couple of 15-minute periods. And with PKs as well, if need be. But we'll take a look now at some full-time highlights in this thing. And Gary, it's been a seesaw action. Up and down the track we go. Yeah, so certainly I thought the first half belonged to the visitors, International San Fran. Second half, though, the home side, they started to threaten more. This effort here just goes over the crossbar. Keeley is struggling in goals, that effort from Hudas Higuera. And then again, it was the home side threatening around the edge of the box, blocks getting, uh, shots getting blocked, and just couldn't find a way through. Of course, on the other end, every set piece was a danger. And this one here, the header, it's got to come back in the middle. There were three white shirts waiting, and Matt Fundy heads it out of play. That was such a big chance. This one here, a clash against the post here, trips over the goalkeeper. Augustin then hits the post. So commitment from both sides, no question whatsoever. A nice ball headed in, and then defending, because again, Matt Fundy gets there first, and defender gets his shoulder, blocks the header. Great piece of defending by El Farolito. And then this moment there where the captain was a judge there. He threw his hand back, hit the stomach of, of uh, Leo Lazaro, who then grabs his face. And <laughs> yeah. the con job, sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't Leo. It was the player who came on as the uh, sub who, uh, who did the little trick there of grabbing his face. And then was the one shot, the one shot that did eventually get through that made the difference. Carlos Quintero, by the way, was the player who went down holding his face. And to be fair to El Farolito, last 10, 15 minutes, they look the better side. The question is, with just 10 goals, uh, 10, 10 goals, 10 players, wish they had 10 goals, 10 players, will they, <laughs> will they last the next 30 minutes? <laughs> oh, man. So there you go. You got the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup extra time rules with 90 minutes now being done with. They get two 15-minute periods. That will be played. No golden goal. Substitutions also be allotted with one extra one. And then if it is remained in a draw for extra time, we go to PKs to decide this thing. And while you are available, if you are on Bleacher Report's YouTube channel, please feel free to fire away with some questions towards Gary Bailey. Gary Bailey played for Manchester United. 
His days of playing are over with, but in the broadcast booth now, he can do all kinds of things for, for the audience. <laughs> and Gary, you can talk about the play internationally, but you spent a great deal of time also in the United States and in North America. So it's, uh, it's one of those things you can always elaborate on, and we always appreciate it. Yeah, USL, I do those commentaries and love it. It's a very high standard, a little bit higher than the standard we're watching now. But a lot of these players played in the USL, including those who played at Oakland Roots. But the question here is that if you're a professional and this is your job, then maybe you can last 120 minutes. For these players who've got day jobs and they, they train when they can uh, to last 120, and they've given so much in the first 90, this is asking a lot of their bodies, and they're going to use the substitutions as best they can. But 10-man El Farolito, they've got that extra hurdle to climb with just the 10 players. So 11 to 10. Both teams back on the pitch right now. International San Francisco will be going from left to right. El Parolito will be going from right to left. <laughs> Kids shouting, vamo, vamo, El Parolito. <laughs> Excitement still there in the crowd. They haven't been running around for 90 minutes like the players have. <laughs> It's actually a really good question for you, Gary. With the 7-0 win Liverpool had over Manchester United, do you think that result will stick with the United players' minds, looking a negative way next time they play each other? Okay, we're talking about Man United now and not this game, but a quick response is all we United fans say, we have a trophy in the cabinet, the 7-0 is just a one-off game. Scoreboard, baby. Yeah, that's it, they just count, <laughs> count the trophies, that's what this game is all about. <laughs> Big thanks to Matt Dodds and Hamilton for chiming in. So play it through until it was not. You've got to think the coach, Amir Durabi, would have said to his players, you've got the extra man now, you've made a couple of subs, you've got some fresh legs on the pitch, go forward. You've had your chances, especially in set pieces, keep bombing that ball in the box. Especially with the extra player, you'd be saying move El Farolito around, make them run. They're tired already. And with a player less, you're likely to get more tired very quickly. So work them, move the ball. With Drago, who has a low shot on target in this match, came in, in the second half. Here's Fondi. Lazaro. Back to Fondi. Lazaro playing the pitching catch. Fondi looks like he took a shot to the midsection. Plenty of white shirts back, just the one yellow shirt in attack and five white shirts in defense. So well organized, the visiting side international SF. They weren't caught in the counter attack there.
Well, this single elimination does not work in the favor now for El Paralito, despite the fact they've played inspired ball today, but down a player. Soto getting a red card. And they've also made, I think, five substitutions. I think they're allowed an extra one in extra time, whereas International SF have only made two substitutions. So in theory, they have three plus an extra one still to make. So they have the extra player, they have the fresh subs. This one chipped in and nearly found its way to Guerra. Good effort from Benitez to win it. And he goes down, let's see if this is a corner. It is the case. There was a claim for handball there by Kamal Campeore, but not given by the referee. So the new captain, Boro Buetrago, is going to go and take the free kick. Now the referee's off to have a discussion about something with somebody, but we can't see who it is yet. <laughs> Maybe it's the coaching staff on the side of the pitch. In the meantime, the players just getting themselves organized and picking up the players they have to. All those El Farolito shirts at the far post, they're going to make a run into the near post. About five of them there in harm's way. Five of the ten that they have. That one fights of twine! Extra time magic for El Farolito, and they have the advantage. It's one to nothing. Well, can you believe it? All those big players they have in their side, International SF, it's El Farolito who scored from a set piece. The big man up front there getting on the end of it. Decent ball. They make their runs into the near post. And have a look here. There's enough white shirts. They don't really go for the ball. In fact, it comes off one of them. And I think it's, it's Jonathan Mosquera who gets the initial contact. But it comes off a shoulder of a white shirt into the back of the net. So... Drama at last. It's taken a while to get there, but we've got it. Extra time found. Some extra life for a team that was down one player. So we'll see who gets credit for it. But nevertheless, El Pararito on the board and with the advantage. It's one nothing. I think it's going to go down as number two, Jonathan Mosquera, as the goal scorer, even though it might have hit a white shirt on the way in, but his header took it towards goal. And you know, they've been a lot sharper early in the match in terms of getting on the end of set pieces, international San Francisco, but a little bit slow there, slow to respond, slow to deal with it, and they paid the price. It's very shocking. With all the set pieces that one team had in international San Francisco, it was the other with a player down and not having the size advantage. Mosquero will get credit with the goal. It is now official, so he gets credit with the goal. An extra time session, El Farolito has broken through with a 1-0 advantage. They've made a change with Gabriel Borges coming on for International SF, the Brazilian. Let's see if he can impact on the game. Goal occurring in the 94th minute. We had told you that one of these teams would score in the extra session. Would not anticipate the player or the team with a player down. Well, especially if you're going to say it's coming from a set piece, I'm putting all my money on international San Fran, so clearly I would have lost it. <laughs> Snake eyes there for you, but it's all good. injured in the middle of the pitch and now it's going to be recovery and can the players keep on going it might be one nil up the home side but they're not done and dusted yet they've still got a lot of work to do and the problem is that just one sub i think i'm correct in saying there's one more sub to come in extra time if that is it and this sub comes on and there's no more subs available and they've reached the limit. Alito, yeah. That was correct. So again, 15 minutes. And they'll flip-flop sides and go back in the opposite way. Mosquera's goal in the 94th minute, though, for El Farolito, and they have the advantage, one nothing. So 
And now we'll see tactically how El Ferrito plays this thing out with the advantage down a player. They've had more enthusiasm. They've had better stamina in this game. And it really hasn't wavered. Of course, substitutions have come into play for this and for them. I'm going to tell you what, we had mentioned Matt Fondi early on in this contest, and he hasn't had a, a major impact in the second half. He's been relatively neutralized. He had that one chance when he could have headed the ball back across the goal to three white shirts waiting a yard out, and he just didn't get that header right. That was a crucial moment in this match. Drago, and he just forces a corner there. That's a heads up play. Well, for, um, for, for El Farolito from here on inwards, it really is about just trying to keep the ball down the other end. Yes, there still is 20 minutes to go, of course. There's lots of time, but that clock is just going to keep winding down. So if they can remain on the front foot, keep possession of the football, they're in a great position. This one played through on Keeley on his backside. Loose for a moment, and then it was not. It's 2-0, El Ferralito. Saya with the insurance marker here in the 99th minute. That could be it. That could be game, set, and match. And it was a real scrappy one. It came from a set piece. Can you believe it? Paul came in. He just couldn't clear then. Lions International, San Francisco. The keepers made a save, couldn't hold on to it, tried to grab it. It came loose. Have a look here. As the ball goes in, it gets flicked on at the near post, and there's white shirts everywhere. They clear it. The goalkeeper makes a save. The goalkeeper tries to grab it. It comes loose. They try and kick it clear. It's just absolute chaos in there, and eventually it comes to Sayo, sticks from the back of the net. And if you'd have told me that one team is going to win this match with two set pieces, like I said, I would have every time said, well, the team with six players over six foot would do it. Well, it's not. It happens to be El Farolito. That thing was just waiting for his right foot. And Saya puts it home. Looks to be the dagger in the heart of international San Francisco. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to get back in this match now to get two goals, tiring legs. And yet it's possible. He's got to keep believing international SF. Fondi on the approach, a little bit too tall. But we haven't seen international San Francisco play in the attacking third for extended periods of time for quite a while. Fondi couldn't win it there. I think what you say, it's great credit to the home side. They've dominated the second half, even down to 10 men. They've played the ball around. They've looked sharper. They've looked fitter. And here they are, 2-0 up with 20 minutes to go and in with a great shot of meeting Oakland Roots in round three. We just couldn't keep it with Rago. With some space. Got about five minutes to go in this first extra session. I think I know who the biggest fan on the sidelines is besides mm -hmm. the coach, and that's going to be the man who was sent off, Herbert Soto. You don't want to get sent off and your team lose, but if your team win, what a happy day for him and coach Santiago Lopez. I think the bitterness would spill over for me because the fact that Lazaro went down, he didn't make contact with his face. At least get your money's worth if you're going to have a red card. <laughs> that was not the case. And so we continue to play on with Alfaroito having a 2 0 advantage here in extra time. So international San Francisco up a player. You see Soto with that red card in the 85th minute. He must have been jumping up and down when that second goal went in. Relief for the captain. And this is where the class of this team is coming out. Their ability to knock the ball around. They seem fitter, quicker, more technical. And maybe looking back, the chances that 
international San Francisco had early on in the game. They needed to take them there and then. Sayo's had good juice so far now that he's come in. I thought that was a trip. Not given. Referee didn't see that as a foul. Interesting to see that again. And that was Sire. But look here, dribbles Sire, comes inside, wins the ball, gets, makes this contact that brings him down. Oh well. Referee doesn't see it that way, so the game continues. And Sire having a, taking the opportunity just to stretch those hamstrings <laughs> and calf muscles. Time and place, I guess you could do it when you're up 2 0. An extra time. Shots right now are 16 11. Rael Ferrolito. They've had three of them on target, and two of them have found gold. And it's in, the, it's in the area that you would think international San Francisco would be strongest at dealing with set pieces. At the end of the day, I guess they got themselves to blame. They didn't take the chances when they had them earlier in the game. You certainly look at Matt Fondi's header that could have set up one, somebody in the box. A yellow card coming out, probably for time wasting. Well, there's still over 15 minutes left, so at the end of the day, if you get one, there's going to be a grandstand finish. Well, they've won the possession game. They've been better on passing today as well. The accuracy is nearly at 78%. The shots in their favor, the goal margin in their favor. And now time is running out for international San Francisco. Yeah, on the technical side of it, certainly El Far uh, Farolita been by far the better side. But in goal, in chances created, first half it was definitely the visitors. They had the opportunities, they couldn't take them, even they had one or two second half. But the quality certainly has come from the home side, and I think coach Santiago Lopez will be very, very proud of his side, especially down to 10 men. Saya's insurance marker in the 99th minute. For Mosquera, the first goal of this contest. Both goals off set pieces. Now, international San Francisco going to have to hurry and they're going to need some help. And Argos now into the contest, number 20. Brother of Luca. Whenever you bring fresh legs on, they have to do the extra work. And they've got, to, they've got the energy, they've still got gas in the tank, they've got to use it. had a sizable advantage here in terms of the possession game in the second half and extra time. Littleton finally trying to approach the attacking third. Littleton sprung loose for a moment. He goes down. No Ooh. foul. Well, that looked a good penalty shout, to be honest. Again, difficult for referee to see it in a moment. I felt the attacker had got through, Littleton and got clipped and brought down. Not given. Nice little triangular play here from El Farolito. Silky skills all round. They may have been masterful of the patience. Not overcommitted. They've not been overextended. And and capitalize on their chances. 
Well, we've had goals from two corners for the home side. Now, this would be a great time for International San Francisco to score. Get themselves back in the match just before the break. An extra time. Just sitting there for a moment, and that ball never made its way on target from Callan. It's a little bit too eager to hit it. You've got to wait for the ball to come down more so you can get, get over it and get it under the crossbar. And Jack Callan didn't do that. Let's have a look at it again. And again, high balls with the big guys. The ball keeps dropping. It's dropped a few times for International SF in this match. And they just really haven't buried any of them. And I'm just looking at Matt Fondi. He seems to be limping a little bit there. Star striker up front. So that's a problem for the visitors. And that'll do it for the first of two extra periods. First 15 minutes did not go the way of international San Francisco. They're in a huge hole right now and they trail 2-0 is the score. They do, they've got a major problem, and it's not like they have the energy. They've, they've been struggling to get on the front foot. They've been struggling to hold on to the ball as well as El Farolito. But there's hope. All the, all the, all the while that there's, there's time on the clock, 15 minutes, they get one back. Who's to say they can't get a second, but so surprising. This is the first goal, comes in from a corner, and the, the first person to get to the ball is Jonathan Mosquera. And there's three white shirts around him. None of them are able to deal with it. Goalkeeper decides not to come. And it comes off the shoulder of one of them past big Mason Keeley and goals. And then from the other side, near post flick on. Ball bubbles, they try to clear it. The tr goalkeeper tries to grab it. <laughs> and eventually, Sawyer just smacks it into the back of the net. Two yeah. scrappy goals, weren't they? It's perfectly described. It, it's been all effort and a ton of heart for El Ferrolito here in the second half. They've played great ball throughout. And now they have 15 minutes to close up shop and go to round number two. Well, there's work to be done and can't underestimate how tired both sides are, especially El Ferrolito. They've got to let the ball do the work for them. So technically they're very good. Move the ball about, save your energy. Whereas for International San Francisco, just get balls into the box, just fight for everything, get a knockdown and do exactly what was done to you, you're going to do to the opposition. And once you hit one in the back of the net, then, then we're going to have a grandstand finish. Nearly identical in fouls, El Ferrolito has 23 fouls. They have three yellow cards on the day, a red card as well. Soto was removed in the 85th minute. Four yellows for International San Francisco. But their goal expectancy is not even at one yet. They have 12 shots in this contest. Two on goal, but 17 for El Farolito. They have four of them on target, and they've been rewarded twice, as Gary had just mentioned. The scrappiness to prevail with two. They'll take more, but they don't need it. And International San Francisco down in a hole as you mentioned, Gary, the, the fuel tank is close to E. Yep, and this will just be about El Farolito just knocking the ball around, keeping it away from their goal mouth, using their lovely technical skills to keep possession away from international San Francisco. And of course, for, for international SF, they've just got to bomb the ball forward. It doesn't have to be pretty. It never had to be pretty for them, really. Just get the ball in the box, get it to big Matt Fondi up front. No major strategy here for Amir Darabi. His team, International San Francisco, has to push forward and play with a greater sense of desperation. The second period of over of extra sessions is underway. The extra time being afforded. It's a couple of moments late in full time that were available for El Farolito. 
despite being down a player. But they have kept their foot on the gas. And the early flurries for International San Francisco just became rather sparse. Here's Lazaro. Lazaro on the chip. Sion, that'll be a foul. I think they brought another sub on and have International San Francisco with Samuel Canguera. 22 year old. He's coming on with fresh legs, so who knows? Maybe some of these substitutions for the visitors might just turn things around. Carlos Contreras still got plenty in his tank, so to Gamal Campaore. Yeah, no rush to retake this. El Farolito is to stretch our time a little bit. <laughs> and just a reminder 99 knockout matches and first round action here today. A lot more tonight. We're see a Bleacher Report on YouTube. Matches are all available live and also on demand. So if you want to catch any of the theatrics throughout, you can do so and go back on YouTube. Matches will be all archived for you. Well, you can go back and look at the red card and see if he was hit in the face or not. Because I think there was a little bit of possible play acting going on there from Carlos Quintero. But he did, it did work, because in the end he got the captain of El Farolito, Herbert Soto, sent off. And then for a really good laugh, that dive on the edge of the box from Luca Agost, the number two. And I haven't seen many better than that for a long time. No, but it all worked. As Lazaro. Lazaro already has a yellow card in this contest. I think he's giving the he's giving him a final warning. That that hand movement basically is saying that's it, nothing more. Next one, you're off. Again, Boro, number ten, has got the captain's armband. He's just taking his time, book that clock down, as any good player would do. And suddenly sprints away, and everything's fine. <laughs> Uh, the miracle of a restart when you have a step. <laughs> Guy will play this thing back. Javier came in late in full time. Argost, Adrian Argost. Move from the back line, Lazaro with a long chip. There's nobody around for International San Francisco. They'll have to converge late on this. They just have not had it in the second half. Yeah, a little bit of lack of skill out wide there when there was a chance to, to whip something back in there from Gamal Campaore. Doesn't quite connect with the ball and the opportunity lost. There was a bunch of white shirts in the box waiting for some service, but I think the technical skills from the visitors not quite the same level as the home side El Farolito. Well, a match that was relocated because of bad weather at Boxer has been moved to Ohlone College. I think he's got underway at 2.30 Pacific. And now as we have made our way into the extra session, International San Francisco on the brink of elimination. And I'm sure the home coach, Santiago Lopez, delighted. He took over back in 2011. He's been involved with the U23s and the academy side. Played a bit of professional football himself in Mexico. A very proud coach, assuming, of course, they can hold on to the 2-0 lead. Campiore, that shot goes 
immediately on target to Lisa, and Lisa moved about a foot to his left. Well, it seems as if the good guys of International San Francisco are going out of the tournament. And they are really good guys. They're actually partnered with Benioff Children's Hospital of San Francisco. He says, the coach, Amir Dorabi, says, we care about our community, we care about our people, we care about our players. And that's what defines us more than anything else. And it's a wonderful team. It's a team of really good guys. But I think as far as the US Open Cup goes, this might be the end of the road for them. All results driven, keep in mind, we'll have clubs from the MLS, USL Championship that will be involved. All lurking in the wind. Frustrated figure of Matt Fondi in the middle, look at him just stood there, arms down by his side. Just really hasn't had much service to have a go at. When he did, had that one great chance, he misheaded it over the bar instead of back to his teammates who were free in the box. I'm sure he'll look back at that with some level of frustration. A player as good as him shouldn't really be making those mistakes. And it's easy to look back now and say, well, if yeah. that goes in, they win 1-0, and it's a different story, and happy days. But... I think, again, huge credit to El Farolito. Down to 10 men, perhaps unfairly so, a little bit of play acting involved. And they've bunkered in, and they've scored two goals, and they've really dominated. Since half-time onwards, they've pretty much dominated this match. Yeah, it's been a lot of effort. Saya with an open lane. Saya trying to make it 3 nothing. Wide open net, and they score. There's the cherry on top. Saya set it all up. This thing is all but over. It's 3-0 El Ferrolito. Lovely breakaway. Good control. Lovely ball into the box. They've only got 10 men, but they're making a count. And that's, as I say, the quality of this side. And they've shown it at a time when, really, they should be struggling. 2-0 up with 10 men. They should be on the defensive. A beautiful ball played through there by Javier Calle. And then Saya there just across the box. Perfect, perfect pass into the lane of Cesar Benitez, the Paraguayan, and that is it. That is game set and match, I'm afraid, for the visitors. And they can start looking forward to Oakland Roots now. And can El Farolito. Well, they've certainly earned it. It did not come easy for them today. And doing so, all the damage in extra time. So Benitez has scored. He's gotten into the act. Sai, who scored earlier in extra time in the 99th minute. And Muscara got the goal scoring underway in the 93rd. As Lazaro trying to cut into the bleeding. Or just goes down. It's more, it's more of a collision of legs, although he's going to pick up a yellow card. In the end, Gabriel Borges, the Brazilian, brought down. And they're trying to take a quick one, but the referee won't have that. <laughs> Leo Lazaro take, taking a bit of a chance, and it's Lazaro here. He gets the breakaway, finds Borges here. And just the coming together of, of feet there from the man who just set up the goal there, Sayam. He's taken a bit of a knock in the process. would have thought that when when their captain left how long was left in the match then about five minutes five minutes when their captain Herbert Soto was sent off with five minutes to go the score nil nil you're thinking all oh, problems here for the home side El Farolito and here they are three nil up with just over five minutes left what a fantastic recovery from being down to ten men by the home side yeah if you look at the box score after this contest is over and you don't notice the extra time you're saying this thing is a one-sided tilt and a blowout from start to finish. Shots, shots on goal, the accuracy passing-wise, the possession game. Well, to be fair, chances in the first half for International San Fran, they had some really good ones. 
which don't always get measured by expected yeah. goals, you know? Right. There were balls dropping in areas that they should have finished them off. And that's what I say. They'll look back at this match and think in 90 minutes, they should have won this, or could have won it. They should have, but could have won it. Yeah. 1 0, 2 1, whatever, if they'd have taken their chances. But in the end, wow, have they been put to the sword by El Farolito. It's just crushing, though, for international San Francisco. You're up a player, and you're down 3 nothing. And that ball was going into the top corner. I think one of the defenders got his head to it. It's just impossible to score against the home side at the moment. So frustrating for the team in white. You make your breaks, and they certainly have. Ferralito, they have not played passively in the second half. And not many teams can say that, especially down a player. And that ball was headed clear by the goal scorer, Cesar Benitez. So he scores at one end, comes back, heads clear from a corner at the other. So impressive. Play, 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 right here. Quite sure what the logic is of going back to the goalkeeper when there's five minutes left and four minutes left and you're 3-0 down. Surely it's got to be one-way traffic. Bomb it into the box. Try and get one back at least. There we go. Our guys can't get to it. Got to imagine, though, the white flag. White flag has been waving for a while. No inspiration from international San Francisco in terms of their play. Chances have been far and few. It looked like they'd have a different outcome, at least in the first 45, as Callan tried giving that to Fondi, but the look on his face, the body language <laughs> yeah. tells you all. Look at his hands. He's saying, just put it to where I am, guys. Just get the ball to me, because the cross before that <laughs> didn't reach him. The cross then was too far away. And he's making the point that the quality, the final ball quality from international San Francisco just hasn't been there. The effort has balls in the box and they've bounced around but quality just to finish it off and conversely of course for El Farolito and the chances have come as we saw with the third goal clinical yeah it has been amazing Say on the assist so he has a goal and an assist on the day and Benitez with the third of this contest Mosquera scored the first, Saya scored the second, and then Benitez with the final icing on top. So Benitez got his foot clipped and then was told just to get up. <laughs> you know what, there's no, there's no point for the home side to get into a battle, just keep the ball, knock it around, game is over. You don't want to get any more yellow cards or anything. You don't want to get any more injuries. Just, just knock it around, which they can do because they have that technical ability. Yeah, it has been a one-sided tilt here in this extra time. International San Francisco has done nothing on the offensive end, especially in the attacking third. It's going to be frustrating for Amir Darabi. He's put so much into this club and, and was so positive and hopeful that he could get something out of this game. And certainly in the first half, looked like their team would. But it really has just all petered out for them. And that's, that's going to be frustrating for all involved. It's like a boxing match, though. The bigger, stronger team threw all those punches early on, and they just ran out of gas. Yeah, they had to land one of those punches early on. That was the key for me. And they had a few chances, too. But the agile, the quick, the mobile team, Parolito, is going to prevail in the end. Scoreless at the end of 90 minutes of play, get to extra time. Two goals in a matter of six minutes and change. And then the third one here, late. Taking the time a little bit. Coach just picks up the ball and slows it all down. They don't really need to do that because they're 3 nil up. If they're 1-0 up, I get it, but 3 nil up, but anyway. 
They're doing what the professional instinct tells them to do, and they're doing it so well. Possession, keep possession. Knock it around. I wonder if Oakland Roots looking at the side are thinking they could cause us problems. We think if Oakland Roots put out a full strength side, they should be too good for El Ferrolito, but they're technically good and they've got a lot of heart this home side. So if I was Oakland Roots, I wouldn't take anything for granted. What's well, a thorough and exhausting finish for El Ferrolito, but certainly one that they have earned opening up a brand new year the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup down a player in the 85th minute they scored not once not twice but three times in extra time Pedro Vasquez Luna blows the final whistle and that is how this thing ends the three nothing drubbing it took extra time but El Farolito victorious in round number one yeah, they are victorious. They deserve it. They've been very, very impressive. There's a couple of little arguments and debates with the referee in the middle of the pitch, but there's no doubt whatsoever that the decisions, if anything, they went international San Francisco's way with the sending off. And a good victory, impressive performance. And what's tough for international San Fran is they've taken, I think, four matches to get to this stage. So while yeah. people watching might think, oh, they're out of the first level, they're not. They've had to work so hard to get here and then it just hasn't happened for them today uh, before we, i was gonna say before we said goodbye we gotta we gotta cast away with some highlights <laughs> gary we we did get some goals and they finally came in the bonus session the extra time prevailed with three yeah from the corners first one jonathan mosquera gets the ball first heads it off the shoulder one of the defenders that wrong foots goalkeeper mason keely one nil up and you're thinking wow you're not gonna get caught again well they did near post flick on and again, white shirts everywhere, trying to clear it. Goalkeeper grabs it, comes loose, somebody else tries, and it comes across to Saya. He goes, thank you very much. That's pretty much game, set and match, or is it? No, maybe not. Javier Kaya with the ball to Saya. He's got his head up, he knows. Cesar Benitez is getting to the far post, and he just puts it in his path. Beautiful ball, great counter attack. And that is it, wrapped up with a ribbon. El Perolito, 19 shots, five on target. Three of them found the back of the net. And El Ferrolito advances to round number two as they pre prevail today over International San Francisco by a score of three to nothing. It's been fun here. Thanks for joining us today on Bleacher Report and also on YouTube TV. My broadcast partner, Gary Bailey. I'm David Gascon saying so long from Fremont, California. Despite down a man, it didn't matter. El Ferrolito prevails in the extra time. They win it by a final score of three to nothing. Have a wonderful Wednesday, everyone. And so long.